me up on YouTube to find out how do you hem a trousers and they couldn't find one and I'm very sorry about that guys but maybe now you'll find this how to hem a trousers that's exactly how you do it now if you look at this hem now you can't see it can you see it no you can't don't even try there's the hem that's how it's done professionally done now I'm back to my table and before I um stitch the crotch up and put the zip in and put the waistband on and I've finished um, I thought I'll show you this step what it is because it, this trousers is so simple even though I say it's intermediate beginners you can give it a go because it's easy um, you'll have it's just the zip and the waistband that it was just a little bit but step by step you'll you'll do it all uh, right so now we've so now we are at the point where there, these are my tucks at the back there. Those are the tucks. Uh, so there's the tucks here, which this bit here is the front of the um, trousers. And this is the back of the trousers. The back of the trousers have got the darts. Here they are. Now the pockets, you can see the pockets are done. It's so simple to put on, no problem. I've got my patterns at the bottom. You, I've hemmed the trousers. And really and truly, this is it. And here's my waistband. <coughs> and the waistband goes on. And you can see my trousers is nearly finished. So what we're going to do now is I've marked it here. So that is the back, the nip. Um, my zip is around here somewhere. Um, I've got a 10-inch zip. I'll tuck it out. I'll be back in a minute right so here we go we've got the two crutch together but to make sure that you can understand fully what i'm saying i'm going to have one crutch outside and one crunch inside so that you can see what it is i'm actually doing and then i'm going to put one of the legs inside the trousers just so that you can actually see what i'm doing <clears throat> so i put this one inside and i've got the two crutches together and I've lined them up. I've pinned it for your sake. <clears throat> and this is the front of the trousers. And I've pinned it there. And that's where I'm going to stop. This is the front of the trousers. Do you know what? I could even, when I put the waistband on, put the zip and go straight up. But I won't. Because it's stronger with a button on it than having a zip going all the way up. So we'll stick with that. Alright, so here we go. So you can see now the crutch. So I'm going to stitch like that, go all the way and stop right there and leave that for... So I've done it that so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Alright? And I'm going to do a seam of... <clears throat> let me see now. I think that'll do. That's enough. Yeah, that'll do. Because at the same time, I do want the trousers to fit. that at this point with men's trousers you put this little tape here because their trousers always split out at the crotch for some reason right now that I've come towards the zip what I'm going to do here is I'm instead of continuing straight I'm just going to go out a bit here just work my way out and I do that to leave room for the zip for when I am turning it in. That's all. So that's the crutch done. And I'm now going to put it back the right way. And there you can see the trousers is done up. So that's the back. 
and that's the front. Now let's continue. You can now go back to the draw, go back to your table and iron that because that's where you're going to put the zip in. But this is what we do. We grab all of it and we just do that on the machine to crease it. So I suppose that's a little tip for you. So we get it again. And that's that. So that's our marking. Now, with the zip, it's normally the fat side goes over there. So it's normally, let me see, this is left over right. But going towards the back, I suppose it really doesn't matter. It's the opposite way. We have this. No, we do it the same, just like the dress. So we're going to start it here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the foot of my machine. And I'm going to put on a zip foot. So here we go. We've got two foots. We've got a left and a right. So whichever one you're comfortable with, you put it on. So for this section here, I want it, I want this one here, which is the left side. So let me just change this foot now. <clears throat> Sometimes I just use my, the same foot and put it on, but I do want the zip to be very close this time. You can pin it if you wish. So I'll put it right there. Don't forget we overlap it. Leave enough room for your waistband. Now we just move the zip out of the way and we come down. Can you see that? Keeping it nice and close. As you pass the section of the zip, stop, close the zip up, Now here, just a little bit overlapping, keep the same distance. If you notice I've got an arm here, I could use that arm if I want to, but no, it might get in the way. And just stay close to the zip. Now the machine can stitch on the zip, so continue. Just go over it nicely, into the seam, and we're going to work our way back up. Be careful that the material doesn't stretch out of place. Now this side is not as thick as the other side, so what we're doing is we're pushing the fabric close to the zip and just stitch up. You got close up?
once again as we get near to the top make sure the needle is in the fabric lift your foot up and open your zip up put your foot back down and continue it's as simple as that and that's the difference between a woman's zip and a man's zip it hasn't got the flap on it so there is your zip we'll give that a nine in a minute can you see it mm-hmm that's fine yeah so that's your zip done so now what we have to do is concentrate on our waistband oh I've stitched that side this we can just stitch this down just to hold it down what we do here is just make sure that it, it's nice and even and make sure that the flap goes over the um, top stitching of the pocket and just to stitch that down to hold it no particular reason but just to keep it down you could also to make sure that your tux goes in the right way you can stitch those down as well to, so that it doesn't go the wrong way when you've done it or just pin it let's just pin it so we've pinned it the right way and the other one we've pinned that the right way so when it's not going to go wrong so here we have it there there's the front of your trousers our ladies trousers which has got nothing there except for the bulge of your stomach and here's the back of your trousers this is nearly finished now we're going to um, I think I'm going to put Peter Sham on this Peter Sham or you can do interfacing interlining which is an iron on press on uh, onto the waistband and then put your waistband on I've shown you that so many times when I'm making swags and tails on the swags um, the top that I put on I called it an envelope there because it's the same principle as I keep telling you all it's the same principle but on this one it's now going to be the waistband and then the same way in how you make the cuff the same thing is going to be a cuff so three different ways of putting this on and they've all got a different name but they're the same way bear that in mind all right let me change the foot and um, let's put what's on changes back. But now I'm going to do the waistband and here is I've cut my waistband out I've cut it slightly bigger because I've made the trousers actually bigger but I like to put my waistband on with this now when you're doing ladies trousers the thing about ladies trousers is that at the back of our trousers it tends to gape because it's not done in the same way as how the men's trousers are done um, if you want to see how that is how I've done it you have to look at one of my other videos um, but this way this is the easy way to put it on now this is called a Peter Sham is what I've been calling it all the years now I don't know if my pronunciation is actually correct but that's what I've been calling it when I go to the shop and ask for it they seem to give me this but um, that's the name that I know so I'm now going to stitch this on now I've got my um, my wrong side facing upwards and I'm going to stitch it onto the edge just like that and this is a technique that when you stitch it onto the edge and you stitch it onto your waistband it's, um, it's a technique in how you put this on so we're going to do this now so I'll just show you
So that is the first step of putting this on. And what we do here is, when we stitch this onto uh, the waist, the skirt or the trousers, what happens is we turn it over on itself and it comes over. And that becomes the raw edge. Just leave it at that. I think I'll do that. Overlock it. Or you do it in reverse and you sink stitch it at the front. And you have a much nicer finish. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to put this on. I think I'll, I'll, I'll overlock this side and then I'll do it in that way and then I'll sink stitch it from the front. Yeah, I'll do that. All right, so let's go to the overlocker and just, just do this without cutting off too much fabric. Must lost some of the fabric. That's my etching done. Right, shall we move to the table now? So we're back to the table now, and as you can see, the crutch is done. It's all stitched up. So that's the front of my trousers. There's my tucks at the back, at the front. And as you can see the back, there's my darts, and here's my zip. Now I've put the zip in this way, but you can put it in where you've got the flap on both sides, equal it out. But I just quickly done that. Um, so you could have, you've got a choice to do there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pin. I'm going to now pin my waistband to my trousers. And the beauty about this waistband is that um, it hasn't got a curve on it or anything. It's just straight. So um, you determine which side you want to have an overlap. So I'll have this side as the overlap and this one going underneath. I'll have a two inch, I have a two inch, roughly two inch lap there. No, I won't. I will change my mind. I'll have the two inch lap on this side. So it goes under and this one goes on top. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pin my waistband to my um, trousers. And you can see here the rough side of the fabric, the raw side, connects to the actual waistband of the so let's pin that down What I'll do is as well is before I actually stitch it up is I'll make sure that everything is equal but I really can't go wrong. But all things possible because it can stretch out. All right, so I make sure my tuck, because I've already pinned it, faces the joining of the trousers. So that's been pinned on all the way around. The back seam, I've opened it up.
so there's my waistband it's on so I've got a I've got a two inch lap here and the rest I'm going to cut off because when I made this I just made the waistband large So this is going to finish there, so I'm going to cut it, say, one inch short. So there's the waistband put on. So I'm going to go right now and I'm going to stitch it, but what I'm going to do when I stitch it, I'm going to stitch it looking it from this end and stitch it on and then turn it over. So let's go and do that. All right. I, before I actually stitch it down, I'm just double checking that it's actually symmetrical uh, so that everything's in the same place. Yes, and that's fine. Alright, so here we're going to go now. Now, to make this easier for me to sew this down as well, I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing and kind of take it inside out just so that it sits nicely on my machine so that I can work easily. Looking at it this way. So here I've got my waistband now. The waistband is actually inside the trousers, so I can stitch it. But what I want to make sure as well is when I stitch this down here, at the top here, it's the same as the opposite side. So they're both finished on the same. And that's always kind of hit and miss to where we put it. But the trick is, at time, is actually get a marker, um, a tailor chalk or a pen, and actually mark it. There's no pen over there. Right, so let's do this. Now let me let me show you. You use a pen to do this. You want them both in the same place. There's one mark there. and we put the other mark there all right so a bit difficult to see it from one side and that's what we're aiming for and if it doesn't work out i'll delete it from the tape <laughs> So how close can you get into that? So as you can see, So what I'm doing, I've got my tooth teep right there and I'm keeping it there and the machine is staying right close to this edge here. It's not sewing on it, it's just keeping it close.
So each time I check that everything's in the right place and, and this is up close to the, the raw edge. Now we come into that other marker, try and get it as close as we can to it. Because I am sewing blind here. So that's that sewn and let's see what we've done. So now we turn it the right way. I would say that is spot on. So that is the way to do it. Spot on. Right.